My name is Stefan Schmidt, professor of political science. Um, I want to talk to you today, is the World Wide Web making the world better or worse? And I have a very interesting little article here that uh, reviews some books that have been written recently. Um, there's a little thermometer scale and then some books on each side. At the top of this are the optimists uh, who believe that the World Wide Web is a wonderful thing, maybe the best thing that's ever happened, and that it's very positive. Uh, down here at the bottom, where it's uh, very dark, are the pessimists, and the pessimists think that the World Wide Web um, is bad, dangerous, and has not um, been a good thing for um, humankind. Um, let me talk a little bit about uh, one of the discussions that's positive, and that is um, there are a couple of, of authors, uh, and uh, they've written about it, uh, one of them is a, a um, person by the name of Clay Shirky, and Mr. Shirky has written a book called Cognitive Surplus, um, and Cognitive Surplus uh, is a book about creativity and generosity in an age, in a connected age. And what uh, Shirky says, basically, is that um, social networks are bringing in a new period in history of very interactive, uh, generous, giving, uh, participatory um, activities in which people are sharing things on the internet, joining groups, exchanging information, uh, writing for publications uh, for no pay, for example. Um, uh, if you go to Wikipedia, uh, the people who write and who edit and help Wikipedia become uh, an encyclopedia on the internet don't get paid for it. Um, people in the most uh, successful internet newspaper, which is the Huffington Post, which is an internet newspaper and, and news center, most of the people write articles for um, Huffington uh, for free. They don't charge for it. People volunteer on the internet, they exchange things, they, um, you know, Shirky believes that uh, Flickr and Facebook and all of these are very powerful tools um, and that um, they are not really um, successful because you are rewarded or paid for it, but that there is something uh, intrinsic uh, that's kind of built into the sort of the, the culture of the internet that makes those uh, extremely um, successful and makes them uh, be a, um, a powerful force on the internet. Um, so cognitive surplus, creativity and generosity in the connected age uh, is something that you should read if you want to see a positive view uh, of the internet um, and then we can go from the top here uh, down to the bottom, if you would like to do that. And I can show you a book called The Dumbest Generation, How uh, digital, the Digital Age Stupefies Young Americans and Jeopardizes Our Future by uh, Mark uh, Bauerlein. Uh, and basically, in this book, he says that the digital generation... Um, is ignorant, um, doesn't read, um, is self-absorbed, only cares about themselves, is interested in posting things on, um, on YouTube and Twitter each other about every little thing that they do, uh, saying, look at me, look at me, look how great I am, and that this is a very bad thing, that it is not uh, outreaching and generous, but it is basically selfish and self uh, aggrandizing, you know, building yourself up. And it is a very, very harsh criticism of the, um, the, the Internet and all of the things that have come with it. There's another uh, very good book called You Are Not a Gadget. You know, a gadget is uh, some sort of device, uh, um, you know, uh, and on the Internet there are lots of different gadgets around, as you know, uh, and and uh, Jaron uh, Lanier says that the Internet 2.0, which is the most uh, recent version of the Internet, has gone seriously wrong 
and threatens to destroy or dis dis dismantle uh, modern society because it has compartmentalized people. Um, it has not allowed everyone to share the same thing, but instead everyone has their own little narrow uh, place on the internet and in the digital world. Um, and it is a very uh, critical um, discussion. Um, Nicholas Carr has another book that uh, you, you may want to look at that I think is fascinating. It's called The Shallows. Uh, very shallow, you know, you have the deep ocean, then you have the shallow, very, not very deep on the, on the coast. And what Nicholas Carr says is basically that we're e evolving into a culture of distraction and interruption, not a culture of thinking and going deep that the, um, you know, devices such as uh, smartphones and uh, iPhones and Blackberries and other devices um, are such that every time you hear the sound that you have gotten a text message, you stop what you're doing and you answer the text message. That we are constantly on the phone talking to people. That we are not concentrating on big picture things but are jumping from little tiny distractions and often very irrelevant and unimportant things to the next. Um, as the technology takes control of us, basically, and that we are no longer really uh, in, in charge and in control. So the subject is very interesting and very important. I have a difficult time personally deciding whether I think the web is making the world better or worse. I think that in, in, the, in the end, um, the internet and technology may end up making the world worse, not better, that we forget um, relationships that are real and instead have fake friends on Facebook who are really not our friends in many cases. They are people we've never seen before, that the internet and technology is an opportunity for a very big mischief, doing very bad things, stealing people's identities and so on, um, because the internet is a wild frontier. People can do something from thousands of uh, miles or uh, kilometers away on your computer by dropping f um, cookies on it, flash cookies, malware, spyware, and so on. And so, in a sense, it's, it is an uncontrolled environment, and we are all part of it, but we as individuals uh, really don't control it, it basically controls us. So if I had to make a decision, I would say, although I love it and use it every day, in the end the internet has undermined a lot of things that are very valuable and important and uh, we may find to, uh, that we regret that we've given those up.